time. So now surgeons are really lucky. They can see everything before or, and even during their surgeries. Our next uh, presentation will be utilization of technology to improve health outcomes and patient experience. The Prince uh, Salman Heart Center experience. Our speaker is Dr. Uh, Faisal Smedi. Dr. Faisal Smedi uh, has an MBBS from King Saud Univ University with second honor degree. Uh, he completed his uh, residency training at McMaster, uh, Hamilton, Canada, and then he did uh, his ca cardiology uh, and electrophysiology in Ottawa. Uh, Dr. Smedi uh, actually is uh, very well known in the field of electrophysiology. He's a presently uh, 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 consultant interventional uh, electrophysiology and head of uh, the electro electrophysiology laboratory at Prince Salman uh, Heart Center. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizer committee, Dr. Tamimi, and uh, the other member for inviting me for this uh, talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll present, uh, I know it's late, but uh, Dr. Khal, you can stop me anytime if you want. So can we have the slides, please? So I'm, I'm presenting utilizing of technology utilizing technology to improve uh, health outcome and patient experience uh, about Prince Salman Heart Center. So this is the, the history, the remote history of intervention cardiology. This is the remote history of innovation. Uh, Stephen Hells was from England. Uh, he was the first cardio, he first man, he did cardiac catheterization in uh, 1711. Uh, this is the picture, this is the this is uh, Stephen, and this is the picture drawn that time. He used a horse and some tubes, and he did the first cath. Then the first catheterization human do, uh, done by a young surgical resident uh, from Germany. Uh, he cut his elbow here. He put a catheter to the right side of the heart, and he went to second floor in, in the hospital in Berlin, and he took a picture of this one, which is the x-ray. So this is the one, this is the first catheterization in human being. And this is 1992. And this is the professor. Professor uh, Forsman, he's from Germany, uh, Nobel Prize in 1956 for first successful cath in the heart, in human. Then I'll, t I'll talk about uh, history of innovation uh, you know, which is a new history, and it's not a remote history, starting from 1977 to 2006. So uh, 1977, uh, Andre Goldsen from Germany, he did the first PTCA, which is ballooning of uh, any narrowing in the arteries. Then 1984, we have John, uh, John Simpson, uh, Simpson from England. He did some, some uh, new device to take uh, these atheromas clots from the arteries. Then 1988, uh, David uh, Oth from USA, he started to have a sp special machine to do directional, rotational uh, device to take all these atheromas. In 1989, uh, uh, Jolio uh, Palmas from Argentina, he, he did the first coronary stenting. So it was booming thing that, that year when this uh, Argentinian uh, uh, physician hit the first uh, stenting. But the problem in 19, since 1989 to 1997, as a cardiologist, we face this problem. Even you put a stent, but there is a new stenosis after stenting these arteries. Uh, because of these stent, it's, it's, uh, it's um, reliable to increase the growth of the cells in the artery. So I remember this when I started my cardiology, we used brachytherapy, which is giving some radiation through a wire inside this stent to decrease the growth of these cells. Then in 2000, 
we had the, we had the, the booming, which is the drug, drug uh, looting stents. So a uh, stent which is covered, medi medicated by a special medication to decrease the restenosis in these stents. And we have a lot of studies and showed a significant outcomes, improving the outcomes in the heart attacks and the chest pain and angina with this medicated stent. In 2002, uh, now we went to non-coronary procedures, which is not related to intervention, like it's related to intervention cardiology, but it's not related to coronary uh, procedures. Uh, this French uh, doctor, he did the first percutaneous aortic valve. So now we are moving from, and uh, my colleague, the surgeon, they don't like me, because we are moving from surgical to non-surgical interventional procedure to fix some of the uh, problem with the heart. One of them is the severe aortic stenosis. Uh, rather than to open the chest, we can do percutaneous uh, aortic valve. It is for special indication. It's not everybody. The first uh, option for the patient is surgery for sure. So this is the, how we can do it. And then in 2003, we start to have some uh, non-invasive uh, procedure, non-surgical procedure to, do, to fix the mitral valve, like uh, putting a ring in coronary sinus or edge-to-edge uh, -edge repair for the mitral valve. This is the rings. We put it in the mitral valve through a just a simple procedure, uh, no opening the chest for a special cases, not everybody. And also this is the, the clip. We clip the mitral valve uh, through a, like a cath tube without any open heart surgery. Then in 2004, we, uh, have, uh, the, we start to treat patients with atrial fibrillation and they have a problem with anticoagulation, like prevent strokes. And one of them is Watchman device. It's a left atrial appendage closure device. I'll explain that more in my next slides. 2005, we did some improvement in the chronic total occlusion devices to open the chronic occluded artery. In 2006, we start to have bioabsorbable stent. So this stent, rather than you leave a, a metallic stent inside, by time, absorbed with a, a very good outcome. Um, this is, I'll explain it also. So this is uh, the first one probably uh, mentioned about these things is uh, Ron Waxman. He said, this stent, you can see it here, by months disappear with the same diameter of the artery. They do their job and disappear. This is the first man in the world had intracardiac pacemaker. Uh, he's from the United States, Alan Larson, he, uh, 1958. Uh, he had the first pacemaker. He had uh, 26 devices after that. This is the first physician that intracardiac defibrillator, which is to shock the patient if the heart uh, went in a bad rhythm. This is done in 1980, which is not far away. So uh, this is our Prince Salman Heart Center experience. I'll start from 2005, sorry here, until 2012 and 2013. 2005, October 2005 is the opening day. This is our Crown Prince uh, uh, Salman bin Abdul Aziz. He opened the center in October 2005. In 2005, we had the first uh, coronary angiogram and stenting. We had the first bypass surgery. We had the first cardiac pacemaker. And we had also the uh, first intracardiac defibrillator device and the first electrophysiology study. Then in 2006, we had this is. This is the Niopi system. It's a very advanced system in our center. We, uh, it can help us in a lot of complicated cases, especially during ablation and electrophysiology study and treating some bad arrhythmias. Why I'm mentioning that? You can see here. By 2012, there is only 163 Nairobi system. Saudi Arabia, one of, the, one of the countries. You can see Russia, they have only one. Korea, they have only one. Japan, one. China, seven. Singapore, one. South Africa is one. Three only in Canada. So Saudi Arabia is, is well known, and we, we, if you go in any um, 
symposium in cardiology mentioned about uh, this uh, system. Uh, our name is there. Our country name is also there. In 2007, we have uh, increased in our numbers of procedures. We have more than 2,000 cases of chronic angiogram and stenting, more than 650 cases of bypass surgery, more than uh, 95 patient pacemaker, 210 cases ICDs, and more than 90 cases on electrophysiology study. 2008, we have an improvement of the number. More than 3,700 3, uh, chronic angiogram, more than around 1,000 cases of bypass, and 215 cases of pacemaker, 375 cases of ICDs, and more than 200 cases of electrophysiology and ablation. 2009, we started our pediatric cardiac surgery, and also we, uh, we started our vascular surgery service in our center. Then, in 2009, we started to be involved in the international study and registry. And you can see here, this is one of the registry. Prince Salman has sent at the top on this. And you can see there is United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, Denmark, some Middle East countries, uh, you know, Germany, Spain. We are the top there. Also in 2010, I'm sorry, we started uh, a, the special procedure to help the patients. One of them is doing uh, watchman devices. Uh, it's a, a, a special device. It's a something new. Prince Salman Har Center uh, was the first center outside Europe uh, is uh, doing this procedure. It's to implant these devices in the, in the heart to prevent uh, uh, clot formation in the heart and to prevent stroke formation. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a very complicated procedure, but it's, it's easy. It's not invasive. Uh, we did a few patients in our center and we have a good outcome. I'll show it to you now. And uh, we, our numbers is one of the top numbers in, in the world after Germany. Germany, they have a, a good number. So this is, uh, this is the left atrium. We put our device here. This is just animation, and uh, then we go out and we uh, deploy the device here. I know it's the time limitation, but this is very nice animation. I'll show you. So this is the device. Most of the patients, they have their clot. You know, we have atrial fibrillation and stroke. Most of the stroke comes from the appendage here. So, uh, so we did uh, all, uh, around 81 successful implantation. We had uh, 11 non-successful or non not suitable, but they are fine. And you can see one of the cases. This is the device. This is the appendage, and this is the device under fluoro. And our outcome from the 81, we had 70 patients. They stop anticoagulation. And we have 11 patients. They are waiting for the time and doing follow-ups. In 2011, uh, we still doing a lot of research. Here, one of the, our study in our center, uh, there is 22 only center in this study. Saudi Arabia is one of them. Uh, you can see only 17 US. And our name is there also, as Prince Salman Heart Center, King Fahd Medical City. Um, in 2012, this year, a uh, very busy uh, year for us also. Uh, we did a lot of cases about cathing and bypass surgery. Also, we did a lot of pacemakers and devices and EP studies. And uh, about by observable stent, which is the, the, the new thing, the new thing booming in the stenting, is uh, Prince Salman Heart Center was the first one in Saudi Arabia doing this stent. It was done in September 2012. And you can see, uh, this is under X-ray, you can see this old, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a, new, div a new stent, but it's drug eluding stent, and the by observable stent, which disappear and keeping the same uh, cavity is there. Also, we are starting, this is very important, starting something renal artery ablation, which is it's a very, uh, very um, promising uh, therapy in cardiology, probably in, in internal medicine and nephrology. We are treating resistant hypertension. There is a specific criteria for these patients, but we go and do some ablation, uh, like a radiofrequency ablation, burning some of the part in the uh, renal artery by this machine. Uh, on the both sides, and this is our outcomes.
which is very promising. We, are, we were the first center in the Middle East doing that. And you can see from the first initial experience, if you look here, our baseline blood pressure for this patient is 167 over 83. After six month follow up, 146 of, uh, over 78. A good improvement for these patients. Most of these patients, they, they are on four, medical, uh, four medications to control their blood pressure. Now almost two after six months, which is a good result. Also, we are doing some new thing about um, uh, uh, prepare, uh, like repairing the mitral valve, which is non-invasive procedure. We go and do uh, um, traction or make the ring or the mitral valve um, smaller for this mitral regurgitation patient and severe um, heart failure patients. Uh, we go for non, uh, like non-surgical, um, like a small uh, catheter goes from the neck. Uh, from the neck, and this is the uh, mitral valve, and we go and with a special ring, we go and uh, we uh, uh, deploy this device. It's very uh, easy procedure, and we um, anchor it, which was stabilized in the distal coronary sinus. Then we we go and we do a lot of traction to decrease the ring and improve the mitral valve regurgitation so it's not leaking a lot and this will improve his uh, function his uh, his uh, uh, also his uh, his uh, you know daily activity and looking for our uh, we did only we are the world they were the first center out Europe outside Europe doing that we did six patients we have uh, an acute reduction in the severity of the leaking of the valve uh, around 30 to 60 percent and there is some significant improvement of the patient quality, especially with walking. 2013, with the support of our administration here, uh, we are looking for these two technology. So hardware, which is an artificial small heart from outside, and also the mitral clip. So I'll, uh, I'll uh, leave this movie for running for a few s seconds, I'm sorry. So uh, this, this device is, uh, is for patients with very, very weak heart. We put it uh, with a small incision, the surgeon, you do it, and it's like an artificial uh, heart. It's very small, uh, goes from the heart to the aorta with a small battery outside. So it's in the belt of the patient. So it's a, a very small device helping these patients with a very weak heart to improve their, um, uh, uh, you know, their symptoms and their quality of life uh, and to, you know, wait for uh, a donor and transplant uh, for them. So this is the, the, uh, the surgical, I want to go in deep on that. Also, there is a special, a special uh, device. We are doing that, or we'll do it uh, hopefully in next year, this 2013, which is treating the mitral valve also with clipping and devices. So be aware, we are uh, maybe closer than we, they appear, you know, as a cardiologist, and thank you very much. Sorry for the...